Hello. Look, I'm probably not alone in rediscovering the small joys offered by games and puzzles, including online ones during lockdown. Jigsaws in particular are proving popular in my house and it occurred to me that perhaps they present an interesting opportunity for students to engage in some beautiful mathematics. So armed with my favorite free browser-based tool, GX Web, I chose a rich topic from each of elementary algebra, number theory and geometry and set out to build some interactive jigsaw puzzles. Our talk today uh, actually has three themes. In addition to the uh, mathematical jigsaw puzzles, uh, we're going to also spend some time looking at the tool that I use to build them, GX Web. Uh, because I believe it's a tool that should be in every teacher's uh, regularly used toolkit. We're also going to look at some of the opportunities that um, the technology provides um, that I've attempted to take advantage of in our, um, uh, our little jigsaw puzzles to demonstrate uh, how technology can uh, assist us in remote learning as well as classroom learning. The um, elephant in the room, of course, is the, um, the, the QR code see next to my shoulder there. And if you, um, if you use a device to um, read that QR code, you'll be taken to the launch page for this talk, the one you see behind me. Uh, and so can readily access um, the, uh, the various components of the session uh, at any time you like. Uh, there's a lot to cover and, and it's a very limited time. So I apologize if we appear rushed, but the good part is that everything we talk about, uh, you can access online at, at any stage. And I'd be more than happy to answer questions uh, if and when they come up. Before we jump across to the um, the jigsaw puzzles, a, a quick look through this page, which I put together as a convenient um, gateway to the various elements of the talk today. So the QR code um, at the moment will take you straight to the page that we're going to use during the session to introduce the, um, where I've gathered together the three jigsaw puzzles in one place. Um, the next links uh, take you directly to the jigsaws pages, uh, along with YouTube videos to, um, to take you through uh, how to use them. So what we don't cover today, uh, there will be support um, uh, online if you're interested to go further, and I'm very happy to answer questions. The, um, hmm. uh, GX Web is the, uh, the linchpin of, uh, of what we've created today. And um, uh, again, YouTube videos to take you through uh, ways to use that wonderful tool. A uh, little control for your uh, QR code. Uh, well worth playing around with. Great ways for students to exchange uh, data that they've collected or um, uh, share their work with their teacher or with others, um, both online, but also great tools in class. If you don't have an internet um, connection available, for instance, QR codes are a great way for students to share their, um, share their work. So with this, you can just type in another address, press convert, and it will um, control the QR code at the top. You can even type messages, um, and it will also transfer that information. At the bottom, as I've, I'm not a programmer, I'm self-taught, um, and as I've taught myself how to create these interactive web pages, I've captured that process in a series of step-by-step -step tutorials, which... Um, can take you from absolute beginner to um, able to create some uh, some pretty wonderful resources for students. So let's move across now. Tap on the uh, on the QR code to uh, to reach this page. Uh, if you missed that, quick look back. Okay, uh, I'll count of three. If you can, if you've got a QR code reader. Otherwise, the, uh, the web address for the page is compasstech.com.au forward slash 
gxw jigsaw slash index.html, but um, that'll be available from the session. But um, let's have a quick look at our, um, our three jigsaw puzzles. The first are the classic algebra tiles, and um, uh, the jigsaw is very simple here. Uh, it creates a random rectangle on the page, and students then drag the tiles. If you haven't or your students haven't used algebra tiles before, they may want to turn labels on first so that um, they can see which are the x squareds. Um, so these are x by x, which are the, uh, the x tiles. And the lightly colored ones, of course, as it's, you see there, are, are negatives. So if you can fill the tile, the, the, the rectangle, then you've got your factors. Now this makes it so easy for students to, uh, to learn about factoring quadratics um, binomials. So we see at a glance that on one side we have 3x plus 1, on the other side 2x plus 1. So tap the factors, 2x plus 1, 3x plus 1, and well done. And a prompt, a challenge, can you find other ways to fill the same rectangle? So there's a, there's a lot to explore. As the students drag the tiles up, uh, the symbolic form is presented. And at the same time, uh, graph and table of values are populated. So students are quickly and easily able to, um, to build their concrete foundations. So forms like 3x plus 3 in factored form, 2x plus 1. It's just a quick and easy introduction to this idea. And then the jigsaw will, um, will give them lots of challenges to work with. You can also turn on equation mode and drag them into each side. And you can solve linear equations using the... Um, uh, algebra tiles. Um, I have a CAS system, an online CAS system linked to this one, so you can also use it to solve others. Okay, let's have a look at our second our second puzzle. Now continued fractions uh, are a wonderful way to, um, to explore numbers at a deeper level and um, there's something in here for students um, at many levels. Uh, certainly not just seniors, juniors as well, fraction work. Uh, the jigsaw puzzle here, the opening one is uh, very simple. It actually shows them the answer. So this is a continued fraction representation of 10 over 7. And uh, the idea is drag the squares into the appropriate spots and see its continued fraction form 1, 2, 3. Now what that means is that 10 over 7 can be converted to 1, plus 1 over 2, plus 1 over 3. Now if you haven't done much with continued fractions or they're uh, completely new, new to you and certainly will be to your students, then um, there's little insights into where they come from. But the, um, the tool itself will help. So if we press Jigsaw, Again, creates a continued fraction. Uh, the idea is to build from largest down to smallest. And here we see the 
Right. So 2, 4, 6, 8. So this continued fraction uh, is a 1 and an 8. There's a, there's a catch with this one, though. You might notice that it's actually higher than it is wider. What that means, if the number's less than 1, then its first value, in as a continued fraction, will be a 0. So this would be 0, 1, 8. And again, students will learn by trial and error. To evaluate a continued fraction, this takes you through step by step. You start at the bottom and work your way up. So there's the continued fraction, 0, 1, 8. Start at the bottom, 1 plus 1 eighth, 9 over 8. So for students learning fraction operations, this is a great supported 0 plus 8 over 9 is 8 over 9. It's very simple. Do you hear that? With each of these uh, jigsaws comes little, what they call Easter eggs, uh, little bonus features. So for instance, it's possible to listen to your continued fraction. It converts the sequence into, a, um, into musical tones. Over on the side, a couple of challenges. So if 1, 2, 3 is 10 over 7, then what fraction would 1, 2, 3, 4 produce? Now we can see there's going to be 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. If you tap on that, it actually takes you through. So this is the fraction for 1, 2, 3, 4. 13 over 4. Two thirteen is twenty six, that's thirty over thirteen. And then thirty plus thirteen is forty three over thirty. So we find that one, two, three, four. Let's find out. We put in forty three over thirty. Doesn't matter when it's a rational number, how many steps, because it'll run out after a few. This is also converting them to matrices. So there's lots of lovely applications uh, depending on the level that your students are working at. Now, of course, you can input more interesting numbers as well. For instance, square root two. Not surprisingly, uh, rational numbers are finite in their continued fraction form. Irrational numbers are infinite. But one of the massive advantages of using continued fractions and studying them with your students um, is that uh, unlike the decimal form where irrational numbers are um, unpredictable, uh, there's no way to know what the next uh, value is going to be, and so you're limited in your um, approximation uh, in that way. Continued fractions um, have some real advantages there. Quadratic continued fractions, ones with a square root, like square root 2, you see, are very predictable, and that means you can easily get as close as you want, and you can go, students can go beyond the um, the accuracy even of their calculator uh, with very little effort using continued fractions. So lots to explore. Our third jigsaw puzzle and possibly one of the most beautiful areas of mathematics, kissing circles. So let's start with a sequence, minus one, two, two. What do you think might be the next few numbers? Now these look very harmless, these sequences, apart from the negative, but ones, twos, threes, uh, and in many, any sequence can have lots of possible progressions, but these ones describe kissing circles. The number you see is the inverse of the radius of the circle. 
it's the reciprocal of the radius. So a 2 it represents uh, a circle of radius a half. A 3 would be a radius of a third. The negative number describes a circle that contains the others. So let's tap on that and have a look at what this looks like. If we were looking at this particular combination of circles, of kissing circles, formerly Apollonian gaskets, uh, we see that the minus one describes the circle surrounding all the others. That's the negative. The others all lie within. So the two biggest circles you see, two and two, so they've got radius a half. Then there's a three. So there's your minus one, two, two. The next number is a three. Now, look at the six. It's kissing three circles. Which three circles? Well, it's kissing the outer circle, which is the minus one. It's kissing the two and it's kissing the three. So if you begin with the numbers minus one, two, three, the next number in that sequence will be a six. And there's something very cool about this, very simple. Minus one, two, three. All right, well, can you look at the next line? What about minus two, three, six? What's the next number? Well, if we refer to our, our image, this one, the outer circles are minus two this time. That means its radius is a half. The minus is, it's an outer circle, not an inner one. The next one is three, and the next one is six. So between the outer circle, the three and the six, is a seven. So minus two, three, six gives you a seven. Can you see the number pattern? This works for certain, certain kissing circles, not all of them. But look, minus two, if we throw away the minus for a minute, two, three is a six. If the first two numbers multiply, the absolute value of the first two numbers multiply to give the third number, the next number will always be one more. If you look at the next example, Minus 6, 7, 42. 6, 7 to 42, so the next one will be 43. And once again, we refer to our, our model. You see minus 6 in the centre, then 7, then 42. And between the 7 and the 42 and the outer circle, the minus 6, there's a 43. If I gave you the pattern now, 7, 42, 43, the next number should be, well, it's given there, that tiny little 190. That means its radius is 1 over 190. Very cool stuff. Very cool. So we're talking about kissing circles, and not just circles. Lots and lots of patterns here but they can fit inside lots of different shapes. For instance, you could fit them between rectangles. And this is a very, user, very interesting and important pattern here called forward circles. Uh, we've got a, a whole activity devoted to this one where students explore uh, the applications. They can fit between triangles or even triangly type things and even have a golden pappus chain. So lots of nice applications and room for exploration. Now the jigsaw for this guy, let's have a look. So in this jigsaw, they're all the right size, but they're in the wrong spots. So except the outer circle, obviously, and the first of the large circles. So in other words, the one on the right, the 11, that's in the right spot. The others we have to move into position. So I'm going to move them around to get a better look. And we'll see their, their, their curvatures, their bends, um, 14, 15 and 23. Now I suspect, because I've been doing this for a little while now, 
this might look a bit like no yes now it will randomly produce patterns press the jigsaw puzzle again the button and yes that's good there's also what I've called a reverse jigsaw What's a well, it's one where the pieces are actually all in the right places, but they're the wrong sizes. The first three circles are correct. Now the sizes, the, the bends, are given in a table below. So focus on the bends on the left-hand column for a minute. Um, the first three are correct, minus 6, 11 and 14. Your job's to try and find the next few. Now, unfortunately, this is not one of those nice ones where the product of the first two gives you the next one. Um, so, unless you're very clever, what we're going to do is get some help. If you're not sure, hit the reverse button again. It'll give you a current score. You get three shots at this. And currently we've got zero because we haven't done anything. But we'd like some step-by-step -step help. Yes, please. So, it's minus 6, 11, 14. We could make a prediction, probably be wrong. I'm going to leave it zero so it actually helps us. Check one, are the first three in the sequence minus n, n plus one, n times n plus one? If so, the next one, this is what we talked about before, and no, they're not. So, Rene Descartes broke this one. This was a puzzle that had been around for 2000 years. He came along and worked out that the solution is actually quadratic. So, and I've made it easier for students to, by breaking the calculation into two parts. We're going to add the three numbers first and then add the product of the pairs. Then your curvatures will be m plus 2 root n and m minus 2 root n. This is all explained in much more detail in the pages, but you'll see what I mean. So that's 5 plus 14, that's 19. Yep, and to make it easier for students, I've, um, I've done the hard work, done the cross-multiplying, and we see there's a difference of four for their uh, product. So 19 plus 2 root 4, well, 2 twos are 4, 19. The next one should be 23. And 19 minus 4 is 15. And it places them. And we see then the minus 6, the 11, the 14. This was the one we just did, I think. 15, 23. And the next one is given to you as a bonus. is 86. So these jigsaw puzzles um, have some beautiful mathematics behind them. But they're also great for students practicing their basic skills. And uh, that's something that's, uh, that's going to be... I, I think very powerful. Last thing to mention, each of the three has some added bonuses. One is a mathematical toolbox where students have three math boxes. Uh, they can draw graphs, they can solve equations, they can use all the usual many CAS tools. Down the bottom then, sharing your results. Now this part, uh, in terms of what we're doing at the moment with distance learning, remote learning, uh, could be very, very valuable. Um, students tap that to enter their name. I've actually, just for fun, created uh, a class of uh, some of the great mathematicians down through the ages. And um, it's another lovely research project if you're that way inclined with your students. Uh, today I'm going to be René Descartes because he loved kissing circles. Add the email address that um, will send this one to me. And tapping the email button, see while I've been working, uh, 
Oh, I know. Uh, once again, it creates a QR code and um, My idea of this would be they would add the teacher's uh, email address and send them their work. It captures what they've been doing, how long they spent on each, each part. So here's where we were looking at the different shapes. And it keeps a score uh, of how well they do. Now, it did the work for us, so they only get a one. They don't get two out of two for that one. But if they keep going, they can do more. So that's, um, that's built into each of the jigsaws as well. I hope you find something to play with, uh, with your students, that'll be useful. All right, let's finish with a, um, a quick look at our um, wonderful GX Web. Now, GX Web is free. It's browser-based. It will run in any modern browser, so you and your students have access to this um, anytime you have a, um, a device and an internet connection. Now, with GX Web, the uh, layout is, is very simple. Um, you can turn axes on or off. You can use um, uh, radians or degrees. Three menus, that's all. Uh, one has the, uh, the geometric objects, points, lines, segments, circles. Next is uh, what we call the constraints. And I'll show you what that means in just a minute. And then a few um, uh, practical ones like midpoint, um, transformations, reflection, and so on. So, um, look, a quick introduction. Uh, let's turn off axes for a minute and uh, look at Pythagoras' theorem. Like any good dynamic geometry package, three clicks and, uh, you know, four clicks and you've got your, um, uh, your triangle. But, um, with any other package, if I wanted it to be right angle, I'd have to do some work to make sure what I created was right angle. With this, you just create any triangle and then um, tell it you want it to be right angled, and it is. Next, the lengths of the sides. Now, this is a constraint, so we're going to constrain one side to be A, one side to be B. Now obviously, like again, like any good uh, uh, dynamic geometry package, I'm just going to put that out of the way, uh, you can vary the size uh, of each side, no trouble at all. What's different? Three big considerations when using GX Web. One is, as well as the numeric representation, it's built on a foundation of computer algebra. So if I've said the sides are A and B and I want the area of A, C, B, then I'm told that it's A, B over 2. If I want um, the distance from uh, A to C, we've got ourselves Pythagoras' theorem there. And students have the ability then to explore this. What does this mean in terms of number, in terms of algebra? So, for instance, if A is uh, 4, what if B is 4 as well? Then the area of A, B, C is going to be 8 half base times height, and so on. So lovely, simple interface. Let's clear the screen. I hit the 2 pi button to do that, and it clears the screen. Um, quick look at this. This is lovely. Um, as well as all your geometric 
objects. One of the uh, the lovely objects is this one. Uh, I'm just going to um, sketch a curve. Now it has a guess at what you want and in this case it's guessed we want a, um, a parabola and so it's given it ax squared plus bx plus c. We agree with that otherwise I could have um, edited it and put whatever function I want in there. It's automatically uh, set the values for a, b and c and given you control over these So, um, very, very simple for students to explore different functions. Third example, and there's so much, the, um, uh, the help from the question mark up in the top corner uh, has a wealth of examples and, um, and problems and all sorts of great things to play with. Circles. Kissing circles. Let's see how easy this becomes. So I've created a circle and straight away my next menu has popped up uh, a symbol that's actually for the radius. So I'm going to tap on that. And instead of the usual R, because I'm working with Descartes, I'm going to call it 1 over A. Okay. Another circle. Give its radius... 1 over b. I could have called it anything I like, but uh, 1 over b, a third circle. Radius, 1 over c. Now, I'd like those two circles to kiss. Well, look what's come up. As soon as I selected the two circles, it said, oh, you want a tangent. So I just tap on that, and they kiss. I'm going to ask these two circles to kiss, and finally that to kiss. Well, that's lovely. What happens? If I put another circle in the middle, and have it kiss, And even, what about one around the outside? So we have all these circles kissing. One over the radius of that guy. There's Descartes' theorem straight away. Let's get our smaller circle so we can reach it. 1 over radius of this guy. You'll see the, the quadratic formula structure in there. And uh, again, we've got the option now to explore this numerically, to try out different. It's easy to resize. So this is a most remarkable tool. Three powerful features of GX Web. Um, apart from the whole free browser-based thing, it's um, constraint-based. This makes it ridiculously easy to create dynamic models. It's built on a foundation of computer algebra. But third, we can't save a GX Web document in the usual way, the way we would save a Word document. It's, um, uh, it's, it's a browser-based page and will disappear uh, when we uh, you know, close the, the tab. What we can do is save it um, as a separate app, um, or it, what I'm going to do here is to copy copy the, um, the code for that app. I'm going to go into my website at Compass Tech, 
uh, go into the double AMT folder I've got an older file in there called app.html which I'm now going to replace with this one it's just a text document and what you saved from the uh, page is just text so all you've got to do you've copied it uh, put it into a document called dot h something dot html select all I'm going to paste save that this takes some, this one's a bit slow but um, you know you can do this on a uh, computer a lot more a uh, lot more quickly okay if I go back to my um, my browser thank you Bonnie and uh, there is the file that we just saved so there's the original GX web version um, that we just created that'll pop up in a minute it's doing the iPads working hard for this one um, we've got things going on in the background as it stores the uh, the video um, so it saves a simplified version which is still dynamic and readily available for student exploration it doesn't bring the algebraic component it brings the numeric part but even so these are a great way for um, for students and teachers to create dynamic, interactive uh, activities uh, using this wonderful software. Um, I hope you've got some, uh, some thoughts and some, perhaps some questions um, that uh, you'd like to throw this way. I'm always available if you uh, think of things later or you'd like to, uh, to know more. Thank you.